Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Sonic Adventure on the Sega Dreamcast. I'm on my sheep yet again, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is probably my favorite 3D Sonic game to date, and it's our first entry into the 3D saga of the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. And uh, as you can clearly tell, I am playing the original Dreamcast release of the game, as opposed to the GameCube re-release that uh, I'll talk about later down the line. But uh, without any further ado, let's just begin. And you, as you can tell right now from the get-go, we can only play as Sonic. The other playable characters are locked out for the time being. Now this game is quite unique in that there is six different characters and all of them have their own unique storylines. I'll be going through each and every single one of them, so uh, do not fret, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see some of these characters in action. I will be eventually showing off everything in this game. Or at least as much as I can show off anyway. So without any further ado, let's, let's begin. Right. Fun. 
Well, this is different. We're starting off with a boss fight this time around. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Chaos Zero. This is a reoccurring boss fight we're going to be dealing with throughout the course of the game. And the basic Sonic rules still apply. Collecting rings to survive. You can still do a spin dash. Although the spin dash is held is activated by pressing a specified button this time around. And now new to this game is the homing attack. We've seen this kind of in Sonic 3D where we have to press the jump button, then press the jump button again, and we will home in to the enemy. And we basically need to make use of this new move in order to fight this boss and take him down. It's a perfect introduction boss, it's really easy, you shouldn't have any problems with it. Although I did die to it my first time playing the game back in the day, but uh... Meh. Come on you big drip! Where you going? You know nothing, fool! It's Chaos, the god of destruction! And there we are, ladies and gentlemen, we are now have access to the main proper gameplay. And Sonic Adventure was uh, it, it's a, a very experimental game for Sonic the Hedgehog because they tried to influence RPG mechanics such as talking to NPCs during the world and whatnot into the game. And not many people do talk to these NPCs, so during the course of this playthrough I'm going to be talking to as many people as I can to get a feel for... Uh, a lot of the dialogue. So I, I, I feel sorry for the lot of people who wrote this dialogue. Cause they must have written this dialogue, and nobody what plays this game and talks to anyone. So they, they must just think, oh, oh, all this work making this one line for this one random character, it's gone to waste. Nah. But uh, the general game itself is split up into two separate areas. You've got the main action stages, which are stages like this. This is the Emerald Coast Zone. Your typical first level. You could, it's very easy. You've got tons of rings, tons of badniks, and Tons of way to manipulate the physics to get as fast as possible. And then there's the adventure fields, which generally serve as your overworlds for the game. They're the main hubs that you will be going to during the course of the journey in order to, well, just get from point A to point B and continue onwards with the plot. And I love the gameplay of this game. I honestly, honestly love the gameplay of this game. And I would love for Sega to revisit this style of Sonic gameplay at some point in the future because, oh, it's so good. It's so good. And basically to um, go about the controls, basically if you press the X button or the B button, you will curl up into a ball, which means you can charge up. If you charge up enough, you can go into a mighty spin dash, just like in the classic games, to get a massive burst of speed. You can jump by pressing the jump button, obviously. And the new homing attack ability is going to be used quite a lot in the franchise from this point onwards, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this, this is honestly one of my absolute favorite games of all time. And I remember way back when I first got the Dreamcast, back in either 99 or 2000, I forget which. And it's just, oh, this game was phenomenal. I was blown away by this game. The graphics were absolutely stunning back in the day. The gameplay, while it's a bit out of date, the gameplay hasn't aged too well. It's still my favorite Sonic game to go back to in terms of the 3D games, just to constantly replay. I love the open-ended level and the design. It's basically a 2D classic Sonic game translated into 3D. Well, best it's been translated into 3D anyway, and I love it for that. I really do love it. It's tons of multiple routes in all these zones, and the soundtrack. Oh my god, the soundtrack. 
I know I'm probably gushing a lot here, folks, but I kid you not, this is an absolutely phenomenal game, and I really do love playing through it. Now, one quick thing by here, one thing I love about this game is if you know how to get through the game properly, you can take shortcuts. For example, over there down on that beach, if I jump across, I can reach that from this point and skip an entire segment. And I love that about this game. If you know where to go, you can skip entire segments of levels just by doing very precise jumps and very well-timed jumps. And one of my favorite things to do in this game are spin dash jumps, as you saw just for that. Because you can get some serious height just by spinning up, curling to a ball, charging up, then jumping at the last second. Because it, I don't know, the, the physics just work in such a way where you will just go flying. It's brilliant. I adore this game. I love this gameplay. And um, while there are multiple characters, the multiple characters in this one don't sort of act like in the classic Sonic games. They are all their own gameplay styles, which... I prefer them to be kind of, uh, I prefer them to be Sonic with a slightly different mindset, but for the case of this game, it works out that they're different style. And for the most part, they all control as Sonic, but slightly different, so, you know. But there we go, that's the first zone over and done with. Hey Sonic, long time no see, huh? I'm just glad you're okay. Why not just use my plane, the tornado? Hey, so you gotta check out my newest powerful plane. Ta-da! Whoa! A chaos emerald. Yep, I just happened to find one of the seven emeralds during one of my test flights. This thing's got a million power now. So I figured, why not use it to power my plane? Supercharge! You gotta come over to my workshop, Sonic! I've got a flock and I've got a show. It's in the Mystic Ruin, the fastest way is by train. Let's go! The fastest way is by train? Wait a second, I run at the speed of sound! Tails! Are you mad? So yes, this is, uh... Tails' introduction into 3D as well, and basically to unlock each of the characters in this game, you just need to meet them at some point in the storyline, and they will become playable. It's as simple as that, which I do really like, do appreciate, so, um, yeah. And if you're wondering why I'm staying in the water by here, there's something I want to show off that, uh, is still, that, still in this game from the classic Sonic series, but you have, you never have a chance to hear it out loud. <laughs> I'm surprised that tunes in this game. There's very few bodies of water you can drown in. Uh, but I digress, I digress. Anyway, Ryan Drummond is now the voice actor for Sonic, and he's going to be the voice actor during the course of the Dreamcast era, up until, like, Shadow the Hedgehog. So get used to the Sonic voice, and is the voice acting itself is a little bit wonky, but I don't know, it has a little bit of charm to it. I love the voice acting in this game for some reason. But it's by no means stellar performance, but every character is memorable, all the lines are memorable. And this is one of the most quotable video games I've ever played, just because there's so many wacky lines that you can always talk, you know, you can always quote and stuff like that. I love this girl by here. Farewell old relationships, hello new relationships, that's what I say. Man, what a slut. <laughs> But yeah, I, I just love the dialogue in this game. It's really, really, really wacky and over the top, which I think suits Sonic very well. You know, Sonic's not one of those down-to-earth series. If things are over the top, it's right. Personally, I'd love to see a Sonic game developed by Platinum Games. That would be something pretty mad. Like in that cutscene where Tails crash, it's like, Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! <laughs> it's amazing. I love it. But there's loads of multi there's loads of plots going on, subplots going on in regards to the NPCs during the course of the playthrough and stuff. And uh, yeah, Doctor Eggman's capturing animals and whatnot. Hey, they call him Robotnik. That's a that's a rarity in these 3D titles. 
Yes, this is the last time Dr. Robotnik will actually be called as Dr. Robotnik in the franchise, ladies and gentlemen. From this point onwards, in the second game in Sonic Adventure 2, he's going to be goal. He's, well, he's going to be going by the name of Dr. Eggman from now on, but I always called him Eggman anyway, so it won't make a lick of difference from these LPs. Either way, that's it for this part, so thank you all for watching, hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish people, and I'll catch you all next time we just get into the nitty gritty of Sonic Adventure. So yeah, thank you all for watching, don't be sheepish, I'll catch you all then. Bye!